All right, welcome back. So far, when we have been taking derivatives, we have been taking derivatives of functions that have been written in explicit form. So what do I mean by that? So if we look at this function right here, we have y equals three divided by x. And for this function, you'll see that y is explicitly written as a function of x, right? Y is on one side of our equation, and our x term is on the other side of the equation. But what if instead we had this equation written like this? What if we had x times y is equal to three? Well, in this case, y is no longer written explicitly as a function of x because we have x times y is equal to three, right? It's not y equals some function of x. We have x and y multiplied together. And so we call this form of this equation an implicitly defined function. Now we could still find the derivative of this function if we wanted to by dividing both sides by x and then we'd be right back to this function right here and then we could take a derivative as normal. But we're not always going to be able to rearrange implicitly defined functions so easily. And so because of that, we're going to want to develop a method to take a derivative of these functions implicitly without rearranging them to be one y equal to a bunch of x terms. For example, if we had the function two x squared plus three y cubed, cubed minus y equals eight, it's not going to be very easy to get this function in a form where we have y equals and then a bunch of terms of x. And so it's going to be difficult to express this explicitly. And so what we're going to do is learn how to take a derivative of a function that is written in this implicit form. And so let's take a look at how we're going to do that. So let's start with what we already know. When we see this, right, we want to take the derivative with respect to x of the function x to the fifth power. This is pretty easy, right? We're just going to have a power rule. So we'll have five times x and then subtract one from our exponent and we'll have four. So our derivative here is this five x to the fourth power. And that was pretty easy because we are taking a derivative with respect to a variable that was in the function we're taking the derivative of. But what if we were to take the derivative with respect to x of a function not defined with x, right? We have y to the fifth power. What do we do now? Well, this is where our chain rule is going to come into play. You can think of this as having two different functions, right? We could say that the outer function is going to be x to the fifth power and our inner function is going to be y. Now that might seem a little confusing, but if you were to plug y into x to the fifth power, right? If you plugged y in for x, we would have y to the fifth power. And so we can treat this derivative as a chain rule, right? If we're gonna take the derivative of y to the fifth power with respect to x, let's go about it this way. So first we're going to be taking a derivative, if you remember our chain rule, of that outer function. So we're gonna treat this function as if it were a function defined as x. So we're gonna have five, times y to the fourth power, right? If this y was x, that is how we would find the derivative of that function by using our power rule. But now we're not done. Now we have to multiply by the derivative of our inner function, which is y. So how do we take the derivative of y? Well, if you remember in the past when we had a function like y is equal to x squared, and we wanted to know the derivative of that function, we wrote that dy dx is equal to 2x. And so without even realizing it, what you actually did here was you took a derivative with respect to x of both sides, right? We took a derivative of x squared with respect to x, and we said that the derivative of y with respect to x was dy dx. That's what this means. We took a derivative of y with respect to x. And so we can do that in this case down here. When we are taking the derivative of our inner function here as part of our chain rule, the derivative of y is just going to be dy dx. And so what ends up happening here, even though we are technically using the chain rule, a way to think about this is every time you're taking a derivative of a function defined with y with respect to x, you just want to take the derivative as if it was x and then multiply by dy dx. So let me show you another example here. Here we have the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus 2y. And let me just show you how we take the derivative of this. So we would take the derivative of x squared as we normally would because we're taking this derivative with respect to x. So we're gonna have 2x and this is going to be added to the derivative of 2y with respect to x. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to treat this as if it were defined with x. So the derivative of 2y or 2x if you wanna think about it like that would just be two, right? We have a variable to the first power. So the derivative will just be the constant. But now because it was actually y and not x, we use that chain rule. And now we're going to just multiply by dy dx. I hope that makes sense. Every time we take the derivative of a function with y with respect to x, 
you're going to want to multiply by dy dx. And so that's our answer in this case. This would just be equal to 2x plus 2 times dy dx. And that is our derivative of this particular function. But now let's actually go through and take a derivative of some more complex implicitly defined functions. So here we have the function y cubed minus 7y plus x squared is equal to negative 5. And we want to find the derivative dy dx of this implicitly defined function. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking the derivative with respect to x of both sides of our equation. So this is going to look like this. We're going to have d dx, or the derivative with respect to x, of y cubed minus 7y plus x squared, and that's going to be equal to the derivative with respect to x of negative 5. And so what will that be? Well, let's go through each term individually like we did in those previous simpler examples. So we're going to start by taking the derivative of y cubed. And so if we treat that as if it was x, we would have that the derivative is 3y squared, right? We brought our exponent down as a coefficient. We multiplied it by that 3, and then we subtracted 1 from our exponent to get 2. Now, because it was y, we also need to multiply this by dy dx. Right? We're taking a derivative with respect to x, not y. So even though we took a derivative of this as if it were x, we still need to multiply by that dy dx term. So now let's move on to our next term, negative 7y. And we'll have the derivative of that is going to be negative 7. Right? If we have a variable to the power of 1, then the derivative is just going to be its coefficient. And remember, since this is y, we also need to multiply by dy dx. Every time you take a derivative of a term with y in it, you're going to want to multiply by dy dx. And then this is going to be added to the derivative of just x squared. Now, since this is x, right, this is defined with x, and we're taking a derivative with respect to x, we can just write that the derivative is 2x, and we don't need to multiply by dy dx. And then this is going to be equal to the derivative with respect to x of negative 5, which is just a constant, so our derivative is going to be zero. All right, so now we're ready to simplify. And the way we're going to do this is we want to solve for dy dx. So what we're going to do is we're going to get all our dy dx terms on one side of the equation, and we're going to move everything else, such as this 2x, to the other side. So we're going to have 3y squared dy dx minus 7 dy dx, and that's going to be equal to negative 2x because we're going to subtract this term over to the other side because it doesn't have dy dx in it. So now we have our dy dx terms on one side and everything else on the other side. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to factor out this dy dx that we have in each term here. So then this will be equal to dy dx and then we're pulling it out of that 3y squared term and that negative 7, so we'll have minus 7, and that's going to be equal to negative 2x, right? So all we did was we factored out this dy dx term from each of these terms, so now we have dy dx times that quantity of 3y squared minus 7. All right, and then we have one more step, but I'm going to need to clean up our work here so I can have space to write it. All right, so then our final step is going to be to divide both sides by this 3y squared minus 7, and that's going to isolate our dy dx. So then we are going to have that dy dx is equal to negative 2x divided by 3y squared minus 7. And that is going to be our answer, right? So all we did was we divided both sides of the equation by this 3y squared minus 7 to isolate this dy dx, and now we have that dy dx is equal to this function. So that's the process. That's how we take an implicitly defined function and find its derivative dy dx. So now let's quickly review that process so that you can replicate it and take derivatives of more implicitly defined functions. So here are the basic guidelines for implicit differentiation. Every problem is going to look different, but it's going to be the same process for the most part. So the first thing you want to do is differentiate both sides with respect to x, right? That is the first thing we did with our previous example. We took the derivative with respect to x of both sides of the equation. Then the second thing you're going to want to do is to move all your terms that have dy dx in them and move them to one side of the equation and then move all the other terms that do not have dy dx to the other side of the equation. Then after you've done that, your third step is to factor out dy dx out of all the terms that have it on that one side of the equation. 
And then finally, once you have factored out that dy dx out of all those terms, you can then solve for dy dx by usually dividing both sides by the rest of the terms that you pulled dy dx out of. But it might be different in some cases, but that's usually what solving for dy dx will look like. So really it's not too difficult of a process. The hardest part might be actually doing the differentiation with respect to x. The rest of it is just algebra, really. So let's look at another example to really nail this concept down. So here we have the function x squared times y minus y squared times x, and that's equal to six. And we wanna know the derivative dy dx of this function, right? So here is another implicitly defined function where we have multiple y's and the y's and the x's are not separated in our equation. So we'll go through our process here. The first thing we're going to do is take a derivative with respect to x of both sides of our equation. So we are going to have the derivative with respect to x of x squared times y minus y squared times x, and that will be equal to the derivative with respect to x of six. All right, so then if we go through that, we're going to start by taking the derivative of x squared times y. Now you gotta be careful here. When you see a term where you have an x multiplied by a y, whether that's x squared, x cubed, or y squared, or just y, or y cubed, whatever. If you have an x multiplied by a y, you have a product rule that you have to deal with, right? So now we've got a little bit of an extra step, but it's not gonna be too difficult. So let's work through this. So to take the derivative of this term with respect to x, we're gonna be using that product rule. And if you remember, our product rule says that if we have two functions, f of x and g of x, and we wanna take the derivative of them, it's gonna be equal to our first function multiplied by the derivative of the second, plus the second function multiplied by the derivative of the first. So let's go through and do that here. We'll have that this is equal to that first function, which in this case is gonna be x squared, times the derivative of y. Now, the derivative of y, which is a variable to the first power, would just be one. So we don't really need to write that, but since it's y that we took a derivative of, we need to multiply by dy dx, right? And so that is our first term right here. Then we're gonna add that to our second function, y, times the derivative of x squared. And so in this case, it's gonna be multiplied by two x. Now, we do not need a dy dx in this term because we didn't take a derivative of y in this case. We only took a derivative of our first function, x squared, right? So if you're looking at the product rule here, y is just our g of x function. Therefore, we're not taking a derivative of it in this term, so we did not need the dy dx. And that's our product rule finished for this term. So now we can subtract, and now we have to take the derivative of y squared times x, which is another product rule. So let's draw a parenthesis here and go through this product rule. Our first function will be y squared, and our second function will be x. So we'll start by having y squared times the derivative of x, which would just be one. And then we're going to add the second function, x times the derivative of y squared. So now we're going to have times two y. And remember, now we are taking the derivative of some function with y. So now we are going to also multiply by dy dx. And that is the end of our product rule and also the end of our derivative on this side of the equation. And that's going to be equal to the derivative of six with respect to x, which is just going to be zero because six is a constant. So now let's simplify. We're gonna have x squared times dy dx plus two xy minus y squared, right? I'm going to distribute this negative to each one of these terms and then minus two xy dy dx, and that will be equal to zero. And now we're ready to move on to our next step, which is to separate our terms, right? We wanna get all of our dy dx terms onto one side of the equation and the rest of the terms onto the other side of the equation. So in order to do that, we're going to add this y squared to both sides, so that would be over here, and subtract this two xy over to this side as well. So we will be left with x squared dy dx minus this dy dx term. So we're gonna have minus two xy dy dx, and this is gonna be equal to positive y squared minus two xy, right? Just a quick reminder, all we did was move these two terms over to the other side of this equation. So now we have successfully split up our terms. We have all of our dy dx terms on one side of the equation, and we have all of our other terms on the other side of the equation. And now we're ready to move on to our next step, so let me make some space here. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do, or our next step, is to factor out this dy dx from both of these terms. So we will have dy dx 
times x squared minus 2xy, right? That is what is left over if we pull dy dx out of this term. And this term will have x squared from here and 2xy from here. And that's going to be equal to y squared minus 2xy. Nothing on this side changed. And now we're ready for our final step, which is to divide both sides by this quantity to isolate our dy dx term. And then we will have our derivative that we have been looking for. So finally, we will have dy dx is equal to y squared minus 2xy divided by x squared minus 2xy. And so that is the final answer in this case, and that would be the derivative, or dy dx, of our original implicitly defined function. All right, so then let's look at one more example for this lesson. All right, so finally we have the implicitly defined function x squared minus y cubed, and that's equal to zero. And we want to know the derivative dy dx evaluated at the point one, one. So that's what this notation means. We have our derivative and we want to evaluate it at this point where x equals one and y equals one. So let's start by taking our derivative. And remember, the first thing we do is take a derivative with respect to x of both sides of our equation. So we'll have the derivative with respect to x of x squared minus y cubed. And that will be equal to the derivative with respect to x of zero. All right, and so if we do that, we will start by taking the derivative of x squared with respect to x, so that's just going to be 2x, and then subtract the derivative of y cubed with respect to x. So we're gonna start by taking the derivative of y cubed as if it was an x, so we will have three times y squared, right? That is our power rule. We multiply by our power and then subtract one from the power to get two. And since we took a derivative of y with respect to x, we also need to multiply by dy dx. And that's going to be equal to the derivative of zero with respect to x, which is just going to be zero because the derivative of zero is zero. It's just a constant. And now we can solve for dy dx. So I'm going to move this term over to the other side of the equation. So we will have 2x is equal to positive 3y squared dy dx. And then if we divide both sides by 3y squared, we will have isolated this dy dx, and then we would have our derivative. So if we divide both sides by 3y squared, we will have that dy dx is equal to 2x divided by 3y squared. And so that is the derivative of our implicitly defined function. However, we aren't done yet because we want to know the value of that derivative at the point 1, 1. So now we'll plug in those values and we will have that dy dx evaluated at 1, 1 is equal to 2 times 1 divided by 3 times 1 squared, right? Everywhere we had an x, we plugged in 1, and everywhere we had a y, we plugged in 1. And now if we simplify, we'll have this is equal to 2 divided by 3, or 2 thirds. And so that would be the answer, or the value of the derivative at the point 1, 1 for this function we were given. All right, and so that was all I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some more examples, I'll have an example video linked at the end of this video, as well as being located in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments, but if you don't have any questions, that's all I have for now. So I will see you next time.